Magnetism Magnetism is a term used to describe the phenomenon by which forces attract some bodies to each other and to the forces which act between electric currents. Introduction The word magnet gets its name from the ancient Greek town of Magnesia. According to legend, iron nails from ships sailing along the coast of Magnesia would be pulled out. Shepherds grazing their sheep on the mountains in Magnesia would have their feet stuck to the ground with the iron tacks in their shoes. It was the Greek philosopher Thales who first described this phenomenon in 550 BC. These mountains contained an iron-containing mineral called iron oxide called iodistone. The modern name of iodistone is magnetite. The Greeks discovered that lumps of this rock stuck to one another or pushed each other away. Such materials that have the property to attract one another or repel one another are called magnets. Throughout the Middle Ages, many people believed that lodestones had medical powers. During this period, it was discovered that a lodestone would point to the north. Magnetism is an invisible form of energy that constitutes a fundamental force in nature. It can move objects towards each other, move them away from each other, or simply make them stay in position. The earth itself is a huge magnet that exhibits magnetism. The first use of magnetism was in the magnetic compass. It was used by sailors and explorers to find the right direction. The modern world uses the property of magnetism in many ways. Magnetism produces electricity in power stations and is used in appliances like motors, refrigerators, cassette players and recorders, computer discs, etc. The Earth's magnetism is used for sending radio signals. However, people knew little about the use of magnets until a few hundred years ago. William Gilbert, 1540 to 1603, a physician in the court of Queen Elizabeth I, was the first to use the terms magnetic pole and electrical force. It was he who suggested that the Earth's magnetism could be explained if the Earth was likened to a huge bar magnet. Properties of magnets The four main properties of a magnet are as under. Attractive property Magnets attract metals like iron, steel, nickel and cobalt. Directive property A freely suspended magnet always points in the north-south direction. Like poles repel and unlike poles attract. Poles exist in pairs. Attractive property of magnets. You can carry out the following experiments using a bar magnet. Bring any one end of a bar magnet near iron fillings and steel pins. Bring any one end of a bar magnet near knife with stainless steel blade. And see, Bring any one end of a bar magnet near articles made of plastic, glass and paper. You will observe that articles made of iron and steel are attracted towards the magnet. A knife blade made of stainless steel is not attracted by the magnet. Articles made of paper, plastic, glass etc. are not attracted by the magnet. The power of the magnet for attracting is not uniformly distributed. The regions near the ends attract the iron filings more strongly than the middle portion. The ends of the magnet which exhibit the strongest attraction are called the poles of the magnet. The above three examples demonstrate the attractive property of magnets. Substances which get attracted by a magnet are called magnetic substances and substances that do not get attracted by a magnet are called non-magnetic substances. These cannot be magnetized either. The examples of magnetic substances are iron, steel, cobalt and nickel. The example of non-magnetic substances are paper, plastic, glass, rubber and wood. Directive property of magnets The ancient Chinese were probably the first to discover another fascinating property of magnets. They found that when a piece of iodestone magnet was allowed to swing freely, it always came to rest pointing in the same direction, that is a north-south direction. The pole pointing towards the north is termed as the north-seeking or simply the north pole. 
The end of the North Pole is termed the South Seeking Pole or simply the South Pole. In the 13th century, sailors began using iodine stone as a compass to help them find their way across the seas. The word iodine stone means guiding stone. A modern compass consists of a magnetic needle fixed to a pivot so that it is free to swing round. The needle always points north and south when it is at rest. With a compass showing where north and south are, it is easy to travel in a straight line in any direction. Earth's magnetism From the way a suspended magnet and compass behave for a long time, people thought that the earth itself contained a huge magnet whose influence could be felt. The earth's magnetism was thought to exist due to its molten iron core. However, it is now known that iron loses its magnetic properties above 760 degrees centigrade and the temperature of the core is at least 1000 degrees centigrade. Scientists think that the answer to the magnetism of the earth lies in the link between magnetism and electricity. They believe that the rapid spinning of the earth creates electric currents in the molten core. These are responsible for the magnetic field around the earth. Attraction and Repulsion You may have observed that when the ends of two magnets are brought close to each other, they either snap together or spring apart. The magnets will snap together if opposite poles are brought together that is the north pole of one magnet and the south pole of the other. The magnets will spring apart if similar or like poles are brought close to each other that is the north-north or the south-south ends of the magnet. This behavior of magnets gives rise to an important law of magnets which states that like poles repel and unlike poles attract. This law can also be demonstrated by using two bar magnets and some iron fillings. The poles of the magnet are dipped into the iron fillings. A cluster of fillings stick to the ends of each magnet. When the like poles of the two magnets are seen brought close to each other, the fillings are seen to push away from each other. When the unlike poles are brought together, the fillings cling to each other so strongly that it is hard to pull them away from each other. What is the test for polarity of a magnet? A magnet attracts a piece of iron as well as the opposite pole of another magnet. Therefore, an object cannot be identified as a magnet simply because it is getting attracted towards a magnet. It could just be a piece of iron. However, if the object is repelled by a magnet, then it must be a magnet since only like poles of the two magnets repel. Thus repulsion and not attraction is the sure test for polarity of a magnet. Poles exist in pairs. If a magnet is broken into two parts, instead of obtaining separate north and south pole, each of the two parts is found to possess both the polarities that is each piece is still a magnet. The new ends formed at the place where the magnet is cut acquire polarities opposite to what the ends of the pieces possess. The component possessing the original north pole at one end acquires a south pole at the new end created by breaking the magnet into two parts. A magnet can be further subdivided giving rise to smaller magnets with a north pole and south pole. However, the strength of the magnet reduces as it is cut into smaller pieces. If a magnet is cut into exactly two parts, then the strength of each magnet is exactly half of the original magnet. Magnetic field The space around a magnet in which any other magnet or certain metals experience a force is called a magnetic field. Bring a steel pin near the pole of a bar magnet, it will stick to the magnet. It is observed that if another pin is brought near the first pin, the second pin sticks to the first pin. As the number of pins increased, the intensity with which the subsequent pins are attracted decreases. The pin at the end of the chain is not held very strongly and drops down at the slightest shake. This suggests that there is a region around the magnet where its effect can be felt. This influence decreases as the object moves further and further away from the magnet. The space around a magnet in which any other magnet or certain metals experience a force is called a magnetic field. 
magnetic lines of force. Perform a simple experiment. Place a bar magnet on a flat surface. Sprinkle iron fillings uniformly over it and gently tap it. The iron fillings are seen to arrange themselves along curved paths. The lines show the direction in which a compass would point when placed near the magnet. Here are some points to note. The lines are crowded near the poles where the field is the strongest. The lines are far apart where the field is weak. The lines start from the North Pole and end at the South Pole. The lines do not intersect, that is cross one another. Plotting the lines of force You can trace the lines of force using a bar magnet and a small compass needle. Place a bar magnet at the center of a large sheet of white paper and draw its outline. Place a compass at any pole of the magnet and pull a dot mark next to it to indicate the direction the arrow of the needle is pointing. Move the compass such that the end of the needle opposite to the arrow lies on the dot. Once again, mark the direction in which the arrow is pointing with a dot. Repeat the above procedure until the south pole is reached. The magnetic lines of force indicate the nature and extent of the force. Like poles repel. When like poles of two magnets are put together, the field between the two adjoining poles is greatly weakened. All the lines of force curve away as shown in the arrangement of iron filings. When unlike poles are pulled together, the field between two adjoining poles is greatly strengthened. Lines of force run in straight lines between them. The field curves almost as if a magnet existed between the poles. Methods of making magnets The Chinese are also believed to have discovered that an iron needle can be magnetized by heating it up and letting it cool while aligned in a north-south direction. Single touch method Take a magnetic material like a steel needle and stroke it with the south pole of a bar magnet from the eye to the pointed end. On reaching the pointed end, lift the magnet well away and bring it back to the eye of the needle. Repeat this procedure many times. The eye end of the needle becomes the south pole and the pointed end becomes the north pole. The polarity of the needle can be reversed by stroking the needle in the same manner, but with the north pole of the bar magnet. Magnetic Induction The phenomenon by which a magnetic material acquires magnetic properties temporarily when placed in the magnetic field of another magnet is called magnetic induction. The diagram shown alongside illustrates the phenomenon of induced magnetism. When the pins are attracted to the bar magnet, when another bar magnet is brought near the free ends of the pins, the pins move apart or repel each other. This shows that the ends of the pin have acquired the same property as a bar magnet, although there is no contact between them. When a pin is brought near the magnet, it is attracted and sticks to it. This pin now acts like a magnet and attracts another pin towards it. The second pin in turn becomes a magnet, although it is not in direct contact with the magnet and attracts the third pin. The number of pins that the magnet can support depend upon the strength of the magnet. If the first pin of the chain of pins is held tightly and detached from the magnet, it will be observed that the chain still remains intact. This shows that the magnetic effect of the magnet spreads over a distance and can act on a body without coming in contact with it. Magnetic Keepers Inside a piece of steel, there are a large number of very tiny magnetized regions called domains. In a magnet, the domains point in the same direction and are aligned in a straight line. A magnet, if stored by itself, gradually loses its magnetism. This happens because the domains may shift position and are no longer aligned. In order to prevent the magnet from getting demagnetized, a piece of iron called a keeper is placed across the poles of the magnet. Domains in the keeper are kept in line by the magnet and the domains in the magnet are kept in line by the keeper. This arrangement prevents the magnet from losing its magnetism. Demagnetism A magnet can lose its magnetism if it is stored by itself without a keeper. It can also lose its magnetism if it is hammered, dropped from heights or heated. 
This is because the domains get jumbled up and their poles push apart. Demagnetization In unmagnetized steel, the magnetic domains are jumbled. The north and south poles cancel each other out. Stroking steel with a bar magnet magnetizes the steel. The magnet pulls the domains in the same direction. Striking a magnet with a hammer shakes up the domain. Their light poles push apart and the steel loses its magnetism. Types and uses of magnets Natural and artificial magnets Natural magnets like the iodine stone do not have very strong, attractive or directive properties. Also, it is not convenient to use because it occurs in odd shapes. But when a piece of steel is stroked in one direction only with the iodine stone, the magnet properties are developed stronger in it. However, if a piece of iron is rubbed with iodine stone, the iron acquires the properties of the iodine stone, that is the iron gets magnetized. This piece of iron is called an artificial magnet. As such, magnets of different shapes can be made in order to suit a specific purpose. A piece of steel or iron to which the properties of an iodine stone have been imparted is called an artificial magnet. Permanent and Temporary Magnets Permanent Magnet Certain types of iron, once magnetized, retain their magnetism. Such magnets are called permanent magnets. Most permanent magnets are made of steel or mixtures of iron, nickel, cobalt and other substances. These materials are called magnetically hard because they can be magnetized only in strong fields. Temporary Magnets When a permanent magnet picks up a piece of iron or steel, the nail becomes a temporary magnet. The nail can pick up other bits of metal and will be attracted or repelled by the poles of another magnet. However, the nail will keep its magnetism only so long as it is near a permanent magnet. If the permanent magnet is removed, the nail loses its magnetic properties. Such materials are called magnetically soft because they can be magnetized by weak fields. Electromagnets An electromagnet is a magnet in which magnetism is produced because of the flow of electric current through a wire around it. An electromagnet is made by coiling wire around a metal core and passing electricity to the coil. The strength of an ordinary permanent magnet is fixed, but the strength of an electromagnet can be increased by passing a stronger current to the wire coiled around it. This can be done in the following ways. Increase the number of turns of the wire. Increase the power supply that is connect more batteries. Electromagnets are used to separate and lift iron and steel objects from among waste. They are also used in many household appliances such as refrigerators and vacuum cleaners.